You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all social media. Um, look, I just want to say, first of all, I hope you're all uh, healthy and staying safe out there, practicing your social distancing, listening to uh, expert advice, and really taking care of yourselves. Uh, scary times right now. I don't know what the cure is but like i've said on my instagram if you follow me at ryan sickler i know what the cure for comfort is and that's honeydew night pants y'all honeydew night pants are available they're out there now <laughs> at ryan go to my merch store got some great honeydew night pants there you can 24 7 you can use them as day pants i've been seeing a lot of night pants as day pants <laughs> And uh, we got some new um, retro tees, some nice hoodies up there, uh, some T-shirts as well. Um, the website for The Honeydew is thehoneydewpodcast.com, but everything's at ryansickler.com. Nice night pants. You man. appreciate Oh, a little bleed in right there. Um, you'll, you'll know who that is in a second. Um, also, I want to say this real quick, because a lot of you are having trouble with the Apple Podcast app. I did, too. As soon as I upgraded my phone, I had the same problem. Here's the deal. It's a known Apple issue. It's a, This podcast, YMH is professional. It is available everywhere else. Stitcher, uh, Spotify, uh, you name it, on the damn website. It's there. But the solution is to unsubscribe from the podcast and then try to resubscribe. That has not worked for some people, myself included. So the full solution for me was to unsubscribe, delete the podcast from my library, and then add it back and resubscribe. And I've gotten every episode since. So that's the problem uh, with Apple. And uh, I do want to give a special shout out to uh, Sweet Flower. They're a cannabis dispensary, dispensary in Studio City, Melrose, and the Arts District with the Modern Approach uh to cannabis with a highly curated selection of top shelf flower they've been hooking me up during uh this time they've been deemed essential because all the health benefits of the plant and they are thank god um and they deliver all over la from woodland hills to pasadena from the palisades to lax if you use code pod pod and you're here in la you'll get 20 percent off all right now uh you know what we do here and if you don't we highlight the low lights these are the stories behind the storytellers and you're gonna know who this guy is here today obviously the president and ceo and uh the main mommy uh ladies and gentlemen please welcome back tom segori hey now good to be here man it's good to have you back thanks bro. for having me man. i'm gonna set you up with some night pants real soon i would love some night pants Everybody's getting night pants, bro. You've been talking. Are these a uh, Factor Five related? These are these are <laughs> these are Factor Five. No, those would be my compression <laughs> pants. Those are honeydew compression pants. <laughs> are those in the store? They're next. Bro, like I, I'm trying to be creative. <laughs> <laughs> when we went on our, uh, it was a, no, the first time was actually like a few years back when you showed up for some flight we were on. I was like, the fuck are you wearing? And you're like, my. My, my, my track five. pants, man. The track pants are acting up. I got to wear my compression pants, my compression sh socks. You had uh, special dad shoes, everything for comfort. Oh, dude, let me tell you <laughs> something. That's right. The New Balance where you shamed me and gave me a, and, and I got pedophile and everything. I don't know why, again, I don't know why the pedos go for those shoes. Uh, I think we said they were the single dad 11s mm -hmm. or something. <laughs> And then I started experimenting from there. Like I had to shift out of my damn shell toes and my pumas and shit everyday wear yeah. into something I could everyday wear. And man, it took me a while, but I got there. Yeah. What's your go-to now? Now it's the Adidas Bounce. Oh. Alpha Bounce. Alpha Bounce. Alpha Bounce. I tried to boost. The boost is weird. I just have a shitty foot. I have yeah. a really high arch. I've got uh shark hope marie tooth disease i got that disease i got what? two diseases bro wait what's that one that's a disease uh a lot of people have it i've talked about it before but um you're missing a layer and i always get it wrong too it's like a it's like the protective layer around your nerves and things like that in your legs so from the knees down the, the people's legs look like inverted champagne bottles and for all the soccer i've played over the years my calves should be tree trunks but yeah. i my brothers we all so we went to hopkins 
and uh, we had to get tested. My dad took us to get tested. Oh, so this is like when you were a kid, you got tested. Yeah, well, he had to. So he had them. His brother had them. My grandfather had them. And it was like, what is this shit? We always were getting sprained ankles a lot. Yeah. I have a sprained ankle. Um, so he took us to Hopkins and they did these tests. And I mean, dude. They take needles and put them in between the webs of your toes and, and wiggle them. They're like, tell oh, me when you can feel shit. it. And I'm like, I can feel that. I can feel it. Like, I can. I, feel, I, know, I felt I, it. I know I've what it's going to feel like when yeah. you put it in. I yeah. know that's going to hurt. Um, and then the one that's the worst, though, is they take this, like, it's like a little horseshoe magnet almost. And it's a electric, uh, electric vibrating thing, like electric impulses. And they put it up next to that bone on your, uh, your ankle, the outside. Oh, and they put it under there, and then they fire that thing up, and they say, "This is how they test." Hell <laughs> yeah, because your nerves don't work properly. They're trying to be like, "When do you feel this shit?" I'm like, "I fucking feel it now, <laughs> right so now." What's it bro. called? The disease is called Charcot Marie Tooth Disease. It's named after like the three scientists I think that that discovered and it. And the whole fam's got it. I mean, the brother, your brothers, and both bro both. So all th yes, yes, everybody. Yeah, all three brothers. And my aren't, dad. Aren't I don't know about his dad and their side. Aren't genetics a blast? It's like, terrible. Like, I fucking I wish I could have gotten like a cool genetic gift. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you see, like I, I mean, I've I've met a, a fucking fifteen year old kid with a forty three inch vertical. My like, God, yeah. damn it! I got no just, fast twitch muscle no. fibers. I've got no speed, no vertical. Yeah, I don't. No, we have. I have extra earwax. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got my dad hypertension told me he's like, it's and high cholesterol, like, bro. That's cool. what I got. <laughs> it's a really cool trait to pass down. That's yeah, factor five. So I had to get. Do your that, brothers have that too? No. So this is the crazy thing. It either comes from one parent or two, and two is much worse. Fortunately for me, uh, my mother went and got tested. She doesn't have it. Both my brothers get tested. They yeah. don't fucking have. Did your dad? So have, he had to have. He had to, it. Have had to be him. And I'm the only asshole out of the crew that that fucking got it. Yeah. All right. Shit. But that's also so that means that Stella might might. Yes, get it? she's got to be tested later. But wow. also, this is a thing that no one knows they have until they know they have it. Like, obviously, I've had it since birth. What was the indicator for you on that one? My leg. So I got kidney stones and I was stuck in bed for months. I think I remember that a month and I my legs started clotting and I was like, why the fuck are my legs clotting? How do you know they were clotting though? Cause I was uh, in the movie theater and I was watching the first star Wars where they killed Han Solo. Sorry about that. Spoiler alert. Y'all. And uh, Wait, what I'm I'm rubbing my legs through my jeans. It just felt weird. And I could feel the veins through my jeans, like a topographical map. And I was what? like, and I called the hospital cause I'd been in there for the kidney stones and they go, look, that's a sign of clotting. You need to come here right now. So I drove from the movie theater right to the hospital. Wait, did you finish the movie? I did, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on, buddy. Yeah, it's fifteen dollar ticket, man. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna fucking. They didn't seem. They didn't sound like it. And here's what's crazy too, and I'll never forget this. I'm driving home. I'm on the 405 North from the 101 up the hill. Mm -hmm. It's like nine o'clock at night. And this car in the left. I'm in the right far lane on the 405. The only thing next to me is the right hand shoulder, and there's a car in the far left lane, a little bit up the the HOV lane. Yeah. And I don't know what the guy did. I don't know if he cut quick or tried to avoid something. Or Dude starts 360 across the freeway. And everyone, we're all slowing down. I'm like, holy shit. This guy, slow-mo spins, r I mean, this far in front of my car, and then lands and stops right next to me, facing the other way. Two people. And I go, holy shit, man. Are you guys all right? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, holy shit. Shit, dude. But it was like a Toyota. You yeah, know what I yeah. mean? This wasn't some handling. It just was all the way across. And I was like, man, I almost got killed going to get these clocks I, fixed. Dude, one time I went to, uh, I was, uh, I was in Florida. I was, uh, I was a teenager and I was, it had rained a little bit. I was in a car and I was just not, just being dumb. I turn and I gun it and the road was wet and the car just started to, to spin, but there's cars around. And I'm like, oh shit. So I just let go and the car starts sliding towards uh, a semi with a, with a, like a, a rig fuck. on the back. And I was like, oh fuck, I'm going to just slide into this thing and it's going to be <laughs> catastrophic. And there was nothing I could do because it was just sliding and it just slid, slid, slid. And it stopped like this far from the truck. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> You luck. And then you shit, just kind of, I just like drive away, like, oh, okay, don't do that again. I, um, 
I had that happen to me in the rain too. I drove that big Dodge Aspen station wagon and we were barreling through the rain. Those tires were bald. The belts were sticking out of yeah. the fucking things. And I remember this guy just, I thought, I just thought he was going to turn. He had plenty of room to do it, but he decided he wasn't going to do it. And then I hit the brakes and we're, we're just hydroplaning the whole yeah. way. I'm not, I let go. And my, we have time to have a conversation. My friend's like, are we going to hit him? I'm like, yeah, we're going to, we're going to crush this guy. We're going to crush this guy. <laughs> and I remember putting my hand over here on his chest. And I mean, same thing at the la I mean the last possible second, he just casually made that left. And we were like, I mean, right behind him. Fuck, man. Did I, did I ever tell you that I got in a car accident the day after I got my driver's license? <laughs> <laughs> no. This was so depressing. The day after? The day after. <laughs> it was happened? super depressing. So when I was, uh, first of all, when I was like 15, I never, had a, I never had a learner's. I just. You just went straight to driving? At 16. So I had and no driving experience. How did you even do that? Well, here's a fucked up. I remember that when I was like 15 and 10 months, one of my older cousins visited and was like, oh, let's drive this my car around the neighborhood. And my, I told my dad, I was like, I'm going to ride with my cousin. And he was like, you don't have a license. And I go, I know. But and he flipped out because he's so about rules and, and like just exploded. I was like, I won't I won't do it. I won't drive with him. Just so upset. Then I asked him to if I could ride with him in the car just to uh, practice. And he was like, you don't have a license. Like just went crazy again. I was like, all right. So but you don't need to have a license. You only need a lures permit to have him in the car. But he uh, I didn't have that. And I was like, just you just wanted to get behind the wheel. Yeah. And also like, let me practice. No. Yeah. So anyway, the day I turned 16, I go, uh, I I take the. uh the test i remember i took it with this old piece of shit <laughs> in the passenger seat who i was like uh he was, it was we were driving in a parking lot and he was like he was like go up here and turn here and i go i pulled up and in the parking lot i go do you want me to stop here like um like i would on a road or just continue because we're in this parking lot and he goes this is a test and yeah. i was like i know but i'm saying because there's no stop sign here and he goes, so what, what would you do? And I was like, just never mind, man. So I just, you know, I drive, uh, after the test, he tells me I passed everything but that <laughs> I was like, did I was you like, fail okay. because of that though? No, no, no I still passed. Okay, passed. He was like, but you had that wrong. And I was like, okay. Um, I get my, I get the, my license, go home and you're just like jonesing to drive, right? Like, it's just so exciting. And also, like, I'd, I'd grown up just uh, as a kid, yeah, like a lot of kids, a car fanatic, right? Like, I just played with car, toy cars and photos of cars. And I have car mag. I just want to drive. I just want to drive. And the feeling is like such a rush. So the next day I have school. I come home and I'm like, I want to go. I want to I want just an active like give me an errand to run. And I'm like, um. Oh, I have my little sister. I go, we're going to go to uh, McDonald's. And um, they're like, okay. And my parents are going to a black tie event that night. So they're like, okay, yeah. Like it's a few hours after school. They're like, go there, go to the drive through get food, come home. But it'll be like, you can drive, right? So we get in the car. I drive, go to the drive through uh, we're, we leave, we're, we're headed home now. We're on us one. How far from McDonald's to home from McDonald's to home? I think it would probably be, I'm trying to think here. I think it's a, about a 10 minute drive. So I'm at you, I'm in an intersection on us one and another street. And it's, it's probably like around five. So it's, it's pretty, you know, it's a small town, but it's tra traffic for that time. Well, here's the thing, because I have zero experience, I don't know, this is like, it sounds so crazy now, but I realized that I'd never asked, I'd never put it together, that if you're in the left-hand turning lane on a green light, mm -hmm. not a green yeah. arrow, right. but a green light, oh, yeah. that uh, you yield, obviously, to oncoming cars. So it turns green, and I'm like, I, there's cars going. And I'm like, oh, and then I kind of, and putting together, like, I, I think I'm supposed to go. I don't know the rule at all at this time. 
And so then you know I what would help with that. What? Some driving experience. Yeah, some driving experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that would have helped. That would have helped. Yeah, one time, dude. <laughs> so I, uh, I see like some space between the car that just came by and the next car. And I'm like, oh, well, I'll just go now. So I go, and the car that's oncoming hits the rear, like rear passenger, and rear. Uh, tires, right? Crushes hard. it hard. Car just goes, pow! How old's your sister? She, well, I'm 16. 13. So she's, uh, she's probably 12. Damn. Two and, little uh, kids in the car. Yeah. And, and, the, and that, the impact split the rear axle. Holy shit. So it's, it's what a, are you driving? Imp- it's a Toyota Avalon. Damn. Four door sedan. Car, yeah. Rear axle splits. That's a wide, ba- that's a wide body Toyota yeah. too. That thing split, and I'm like, fuck. So first and thing I hit, do, who is it? Who hit you? Uh, a lady, who she's just like <laughs> looking. You know, she's probably like 55, and she's just like, I don't and there's know. no just, airbag or anything. She doesn't then. come and say like, "Are you okay?" She just, goes, <laughs> she just out looking. What? <laughs> just looking. I'm like. Jesus Christ, like, come fucking ask us if we're all right. Are you able to get out and stuff? Are you able to get out? But the first thing I do, there's a there's a car, like the mounted car phone in the car. Uh, and I I call oh, and my dad answers the phone and I just go, I crashed. <laughs> That's it. That's what you said. Yep. I he's like, hello. I go, I crashed. <laughs> and he's like, he's like, where are you? And I tell him. Dude, he shows up in uh, his black tie gear, tuxedo, <laughs> tuxedo, like with the tie off, you know, and he's just like, he shows up also fire, police, ambulance, every, everyone's there. Like it's a huge intersection crash <coughs> at, in a, in a, on a major yeah. street at that time. So here's the thing is like, I'm like, you're right. My sister, she's like uh, more emotionally worked up. She's like, uh, and they go, the paramedic comes over. He goes, are you okay? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, do you feel uh, like off at all? And she's like, I mean, he's like, are you like at all uncomfortable? And she goes, yeah. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, get the stretcher. So I was like, God damn it. <laughs> so like she's sitting. I'm like, you need a stretcher? And she's like, I don't know. She he because he had asked her like a leading of question, course, of course, and she yeah. goes, Yes, like yeah. I do feel bad. And he's like, Stretch. It's like he gets twenty bucks every yeah. time somebody gets on so the stretcher. Strap her you know what I mean? Yeah, right. Head right. down, and I'm like, <laughs> It looks so scary. Oh though. yeah, like, no. And then she starts crying more. She's like, uh, yeah, yeah, the way like, into the fucking damn it. <laughs> into the tunnel. He's, he'll walk again. But you guys didn't go to the hospital or anything? Well, yeah. So this is the best part. I was like, God damn. So first of all, you know, I'm one day into my driver's license. Yeah, day one. And I also am like, I'm believing that I'm a good, like, I'll be like, I'll be a good driver. My older sister, by the way, is a horrific driver. Has double digit car accidents and tickets and stuff. Yeah. Out, For real? Out of this world. That's crazy. Out of this world. You've you've never double digit double car digit, accidents double digits. and tickets. Yes, uh, she got a ticket going 105 and a 55. <laughs> <Holy> <laughs> shit, that's yeah. jail time. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> dude, she has. That's like reckless driving. They'll throw is. everything at you. They on told that. her. They told her. They're like, you know, we could take you to jail right now. We could take your car. Um, they they told her. They're like, what the fuck? Like my dad goes, what the fuck are you doing? And she goes, I was dancing. <laughs> Dri- like dancing, driving, didn't even realize it. Yeah. Oh my God. She uh she backed up one time. She backed up into a light post, um, but it was to drive across the street. So she hit that. She hit a parked car once. She hit the island at a gas station. <laughs> she hit the pole exiting a parking lot. God. She damn, got. Dude. She's t-boned a car. She's been t-boned. Um, just countless, countless. Every every way that you could fuck up a car she's done it so anyways she's a couple years older than me she's already like had a few of these and now i'm like now i'm like god damn it man so we go to the hospital and we're sitting in this waiting room my mother's of course traumatized you know her baby is in there and then i feel totally guilty like my dumbass 
not knowing that rule got my fucking sister in the hospital and I, and I just feel so low and so badly. I'm like, fuck. And I just don't know. Like, I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm, I'm just so depressed in the moment. And they're like, it's okay. Like you didn't know. And, uh, you know, she's going to be all right. And I'm like, I know. I just feel like such a piece of shit. I ruined your night. I ruined the car. The sister, axle. Yeah. The axle split. split. And, I, and then I, as I'm sitting there and they're like, it's okay. I'm like, all right. Then a, uh, a Florida highway patrolman comes in. He's like, ah, sorry about, you know, what happened. Uh, here's also your ticket for the violations. Oh, it's like my you, God. You, yeah, you got to get <laughs> yeah, all that. That's what he's giving like, them to you. <laughs> in the hospital got waiting 47 room. 47 points like, right now. But it's like, uh, and the, you just sign right here. That's a $380 ticket. And then I was like, cool. He probably got one guy on the force. Yeah. You know, the soft spoken guy. Yeah. Like, send, send, send Larry in. Yeah. That. Like, hey, Larry I'm talks sorry. to kids well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, cool. Well, this is a perfect uh, thing to talk about because we got some updates I want to share with everybody about the honeydew. But also, I want to tell you so, my stepson is 16. He has his learner's permit now. And we've been out driving and we're on quarantine, can't do anything. So. Uh, I put a bunch of GoPros in the car and on the car, and um, I'm starting a new series called, just a little short web series called Learner's Permit, where I take him out and teach him how to drive and shit like yeah. left-hand turn lanes and arrows and just about life in general. Let me know? tell you something. I get that turn right every time now. <laughs> <laughs> I never fucked that one up. Well, Learner's Permit will be available soon. That sounds uh, cool. It's fun. I'm working on it. And as soon as we're off quarantine, what I'd love to do is have a, introduce every once in a while a backseat driver and have a, like you and yeah. other comedians pop up. You know up what I've always I would love to, to do? Him about that. To, I would love to do that and do it in a, <clears throat> like a high horsepower car that makes a 16-year-old go like, oh, fuck. What, let him drive it? I'll be the one going, oh, fuck. He can't handle that. He can't handle that at all. He wants to, though. He loves that I shit. Want, I wanted to do that to, to Bert's uh, daughter. To You're Jordan. such a car guy. You know what he, the type of cars? He loves the – there's a Subaru that he people loves. Lo some people are – that is a lane – that has a, it's like a cult following. I mean, he loves all your cars. Yeah, he, but he loves your cars. But that, this, he'll see it every now and then. We'll see it. He goes, Sub that Subaru, that dude, that one. But that, I'm like, you know who's Subaru? a devout Subaru guy too? Is a uh, Tosh. Oh yeah, he loves Subarus. Yeah, he loves them. Swears by this car. Yeah. He grew up on like guys like Ken Block and all these racers, and it would just, you know, yeah, tear it up. I, I mean, I have a feeling that like it must be a thing where if you have one. You don't leave them because yeah, so far they got age on them. And he's like, that car is bad ass. Yeah. Like, really? That one, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah. So learners permits coming. I'd love to have you. If you trust him to drive your ass around, I'm yeah. not getting in a high power car. You two motherfuckers. There is no way. Um, but also some updates on the honeydew. So, you know, with everything going on with this coronavirus and, and social distancing, distancing being six feet, I just, it's odd to me that James Brown would not be able to be between us right now. I, I know you know that. <laughs> what do you mean? You know, <laughs> six, three, you six. say he would be, he would, uh, you say if, if we sat on the, if you sat on the, the head end of James Brown, I was at his, and feet, we can have a perfect conversation. I'm saying, fine. no, we're, we're fucking there's, four inches too close. There's six <laughs> foot, six feet between us at that point. <laughs> six, six. Five. It'd be just like having Michael Jordan lay between us. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> well <clears throat> there's a lot going on so let's update everybody with what's yeah. going on with the honeydew so crazy things are going on right now obviously you got where we record now maybe hours are going to be limited staff limited blah 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 there's a yep. lot going on i do not live near here i live on the west side if this shit gets any worse and we aren't able to record anywhere we have to do it at our homes yep Probably. Are yeah, you prepared yeah. to do that? Well, we started a transition um, yeah. to do that about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So I took a bunch of cables, mics, mic arms, everything to the house to start doing your mom's house from the house. Yeah. Uh, literally the next day, the mayor announced, um, you know, the stay at home policy we have here in L.A. with permission for media that we fell under to keep doing it which is yep. the only because our next thing was going to be to bring video equipment home and, and start yes. setting that up which is still a possibility it may um, have to. it may have to happen um 
but yeah, it's been, it's, it's, um, you know, and like this week we were supposed to come in yesterday to do our podcast that has now, um, moved, was moved to tomorrow. Yeah. And I just got the message that it's now going to be moved to Saturday. It's all because yeah, of like fucking crazy coverage for someone to watch our kids and that person's been sick. So yeah, it's all, it's all crazy right now. Yeah. And my daughter's mother actually is, she's a badass audio mixer. She works at Fox and they make her go in. They're still making her go. Really? And every day she goes in, they take everyone's temperature. If you have a fever, your ass is out. They don't let you in. But she's considered essential as well. Wow. Um, so they're being great about it. They're even giving them hazard pay. They're giving them like nine bucks an hour on top of what they make. That's great is, to that still have a great. gig, though. Yeah, hell yeah. Because uh, I don't I don't have anything for the foreseeable future. But you can get your goddamn night pants at uh, ryansickler.com. Stay comfy. Get them night pants. Uh, you can check out Learner's Permit, too. That's coming. Uh, but what we're going to do with the honeydew, so I am going to move out of this studio and put it in, uh, I'll just say where it is, it's a Santa Monica Music Center. So my um, neighbor, her family has owned it for like 50 years. There's one in Santa Monica, there's one in Culver City, um, and it's pretty close to where I live. So I'm going to rent a studio out of the back of that, flip that to the honeydew studio, and then... Um, I'll be coming at you right from there. Same format, same everything. Uh, we're going to keep the Honeydew, I believe, is a featured channel on the YMH page. So mm -hmm. if you're on yeah. the YouTube, it's there under you guys, you and Christina, and I believe the highlights and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it's, but 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 what I've asked to do that I'd like to do, because it's just time and I need to do it, I, we're going to move. You can still get to me from the YMH channel, but we're going to move the Honeydew episodes to my YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. And you're cool with that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, Anything you want to do, um, I'm 100% supportive of. Uh, you know I'm your biggest fan. I so I, 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 I uh, It's a crazy you know, time. Yeah. So, um, so if you guys want to help the Honeydew and help support me and keep this thing uh, going on video, just go subscribe to my YouTube page. You're going to get Learner's Permit there. You're going to get the Honeydew there. You're going to get uh, more stand-up clips there. And then I want to announce something else, too, that I'm doing. I'm going to start a Patreon um, called The Honeydew With Y'all. And over the last year and a half, I've gotten so many amazing stories that I think it's time that they're told. So what I'm going to tell you to do now is go to my website, ryansickler.com, subscribe to my email, and then send me a, just a quick paragraph of what your story is, why you think it should be heard. And then I'm keeping it one tier. It's five bucks a month. I'm going to try to give you, you know, several episodes a month uh, while we're on lockdown. We'll Zoom them or something like that. I'll video you in um, and then we'll put them up and you get to hear the honeydew with y'all. So I can't wait to hear your stories. And as so many of you sent them, I, I will go back through them. But um, and so I would say this, on. I would jump on this because people will need you'll need to say it over and over and over for all those things. But especially on YouTube, go now yes. to YouTube, the Honeydew, and subscribe now. And say that every episode. Yes. Because uh, that that fan base will subscribe. You just got to keep saying it. Yep. Go right now and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Go check out Nine Inches with your boy Tom Segura. That's on there, uh, where James Brown is 5'6". Is um, almost 6'8", some people yeah, say. 6'8", almost. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine if a guy six eight could really dance the way he could? It'd be though. like LeBron James doing it. <laughs> yeah. Who I think can actually dance. But like that? Yeah, no, like not that. like that. No one could do that. <laughs> you gotta be closer to the fucking earth for that kind of shit. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, uh Nadav over there is telling us that the URL will be in the YouTube description of this video. So that the URL for my YouTube? Yeah. So you'll be able to click on that and uh subscribe right away. Um, and if you ever get confused, the feature channel is always on uh, YMH. So um, can you scroll down? What else is on there? That's it. Right. Um, so I wanted to tell you this, too. This made me laugh. Um, our buddy Eric Snyder, uh, who uh, we drank and hung out with in Richmond, Virginia at your show. Remember, you yeah, remember yeah. Snyder. Yeah, yeah told me this story the other day this made me laugh so hard uh, uh he was uh he he slept sitting up dude <laughs> not only night. did he sleep sitting up his wife was like okay you can stay and drink with them but you've got a meeting in the fucking morning you gotta you be you cannot there. miss it you can't miss it he's like i'll be there i'll be there 
And then he drank. I mean, he kept, he he drank the wine out of the fucking bitty, like everything. He drank it all. And it, I set an alarm for like it was an early. He had to leave it like I want to say six. Yeah, I set he, the alarm early, man. Yeah, for five thirty. I'm doing. I wake up I'm like, Eric, get up, get up. We slept in the same bed. He's in the same king bed as me. I'm like, get up. You gotta go and do your thing. He's like, okay, and he leaves. And I don't know. I, we had a long night. I slept in. Probably got up ten, ten thirty. And I get, I fully get ready. I go, I think we're going to meet you or something. I walk out and the room was big enough to have this little entrance area. And there was a wing back chair. And this motherfucker is sitting upright in it asleep. I go, Eric, you didn't go to your meeting. He goes, oh, I guess I missed it. He, <laughs> he sat down in that chair to put his shoes on and passed, and passed out, out upright. Out, yeah. Sitting up. Sitting up. Yep, and never made it to the. Well, that night, the night before, I was in your room with you guys, and I kept looking. I go, he's not going to that meeting tomorrow. Because he's just like, we get another one. I'll be there. I'll be there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. (laughs) he was. But he told me a story, um, like a month or so ago. I guess he was at the gym, and uh, he goes, "I got to tell you this. This just happened. It made me laugh." And he's in there, and it's it's him. There's a black dude in there, and then this white dude with his two little kids, and they, the three of them, had just gotten out of the pool. And the little kid looks at his dad and goes, Dad, why is your penis so small? And the black guy out loud goes, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was dying, dude. <laughs> dying. Why is your penis so small? <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> oh, shit, dude. I don't know. I, I, have you, like, I know your dad embarrasses you, but have you ever had any time where, like, <laughs> That's what yeah. parents do, though. You yeah, know? They, do. they do. Like my dad, used they to, both do. Yeah, yeah. But my dad would do it intentionally. Like there's, a, there was a no. time where we had, we had this 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 station wagon I mentioned. It's this 1977. It's a Dodge Aspen limited edition. Oh, excuse me. Wood panel, <laughs> maroon, dark tinted yeah. windows around. Limited, y'all. limited edition play. Uh, you know, pleather seats and that I talk about that early power steering. Remember early power steering where if you just if you just like touched it the car like (laughs) like it was so unnecessary like nobody needs to steer like that high beams down on the floor you know and i'm we're in ocean city maryland it's the middle of summer and it's coastal highway which is it's not like the pch but it is and the fact that if there's one asshole breaks down we're all we're sitting forever yeah you know and that's where we are and it's we're cooking in the fucking sun the ac's blowing hot air it's not working and um I'm trying to roll my window down and it, you know, it squeaks those mm-hmm. electric, those, you know, and it goes a quarter, a quarter up, you know, and I'm, he's putting it back up and I'm going down and just this car of these, I, I'm probably 13, a car load of these fucking hot seniors. They're all in senior week, pull up next to us. These girls are hot <laughs> and I'm just staring at them. And all of a sudden I hear, and I see it go down. I'm like, Dad. And I'm trying to roll it up. And he locked it up front. He's like, hey, girls. Oh, no. I'm like, Dad. He's like, hey, girls, my son Ryan right here. You think he's cute? And I'm like, oh, my fucking God. Dad, shut You know, I'm dad. like, shut up. He's like, tell him, Ryan. He's doing a lot of push-ups now. <laughs> you know, what's your, what are your grades, Ryan? Tell him what your grades are. I'm like, oh, my God. He made the presidential fitness, fitness, uh, physical fitness award. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Do they at least entertain it or no? They did. Oh, they loved it. I was yeah. humiliated. He did it too. Um, and I, I've been emailing with him. Thank you as well. But uh, DMC from Run DMC is going to come on the Honeydew eventually when all this shit's over. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, we've been going back and forth. And um, that night, I'm going to tell him this too. I still have the ticket stub. Um, my dad took us to see. It was me, my two brothers, and my buddy Shannon. And took us with his dad to see Run DMC and the Beastie Boys together forever at the Capitol Center in D.C., I think we're like 13, 14. You remember maybe? the show? Oh, yeah. I, it was the Beastie Boys License to Ill. They had the girls dancing in the cages back when they were the beer, you know, throwing and everything else before they got to check your head and all that stuff. But um, what I really remember is my dad doing that shit again because we're all in a row and right behind us in this row. And I, like I say, I'm probably the same age, right in that pocket, 13, 14, 15. And these <laughs> girls are right here in this row. They're college girls or whatever. And. Hey girls, this is my son Ryan. Oh, I'm like, shut god. the fuck up, Dad. You know I can't. Oh my god, <laughs> kept doing that the whole time. I'm like, look at him. You think he's cute, oh. girls? You think he's cute? I'm like, shut the fuck up, Dad. I'm trying to watch Run DMC. Oh my god, my 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 dad. See, that's 
that's awareness that he's doing something embarrassing. Yeah. My dad's is totally unintentional. Well, I mean, I would get that too, but he never did intentional shit. No. My dad would do this one That a lot. wasn't his thing. We'd yeah. go to like uh, Target or whatever, Kmart back then. There's no Target. And uh, we'd be looking at, we'd be in the fishing aisle looking at lures or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he would drop a fart, but he wouldn't say anything. Yeah. And then he would casually move to the other side. And then it would hit us or the other people. We'd be like, oh my God, I would hear him on the other side laughing so hard. Yeah, my like, dad definitely likes yeah. a fart thing. Like he, he actually, I was, <coughs> I was writing about this the other day about how he has some, so many shit and fart stories that he's told so many times that they have titles, you know? So he titles. Like, yeah. He, <laughs> he's like, like he'll refer to them. He's like Orlando airport. And I'm like, yeah, I remember. So he does, uh, he'll refer. He's like, remember the movie theater? And I'm like, Oh God. Cause one time we went as a family to the movies and it was like, the movie was starting. I want to say it's like in the first few minutes of the movie and we're all in one row, the, our family. And then the rows in front of us are full. Dude, he dropped. My dad had diverticulitis. Mm -hmm. He had a bunch of intestines removed, um, like emergency surgery when he was like early forties. And what was that because of? That's a, that, that's a, like a inflation that happens in your large intestines. Right. Um, it's, it's a di di hereditary. I don't know. I think it might be. Better get ready. Yeah, fun. I know. So he, um, ever since then he said, you know, everything was different with his digestive tract, but his farts are fucking, I mean, everybody says like their dad can fart. I'm telling you, I've never, never been around anything like this. And I've also, I shared a hotel room with him like a few years ago where he farted and I was like, man, fuck you. I <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. I came back 35 minutes later and it smelled like someone's shit in the room. Like just the hanging in there. Yeah. Oh, God. I just, so we were in the theater and my dad, <laughs> my dad farted. Well, it, it wasn't audible. You just all of a sudden you're just, you're like, Oh my and God. And you know, it's one of his, it's like a guy pulled his pants down and shit in the <laughs> eye. So it's, not fresh. it's so strong. Yeah. So immediately you see like my mom go, I don't, right? Like she's just like, I don't. And then all of us are like, oh my God. And you see him, he's like, <laughs> like this. And literally you can't one, two, three in front of us. They 10 got people up. stand up and they no. all left. They all went to like it different seats. Bad. Everybody left. And then, and then his family left too. <laughs> we, <laughs> we all family, got up yeah, like, and we left. Sweet. And then there's my dad alone and 25 empty chairs ar around him. And uh, eventually my mom was like, we should go sit back next to him. Like, I feel badly. I'm like, I don't, I yeah. don't feel badly at all. Um, but he'll refer, he's like, remember that movie theater? Like he says it like, right. remember that game where you hit a fucking home run? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was great. My, uh, my grandmother had an epic one. And it was one that was just so funny that we would make her tell the story again and again. Like it never got old us because she would laugh and she had a laugh. I mean, we all have a different laugh. My, I probably have more of a laugh like my dad, but my grandmother would get in this one where she she would get in that where she can't breathe either, and she'd be like, <laughs> and then it would be a pause, and then a boom, and then a boom, you know, and it just kept going till. She told me one time she was in a cab with my aunt Marguerite, her sister, and they, those two started laughing about something, and she was she laughed so hard she peed her pants, but that made her laugh harder, and she couldn't tell my aunt Marguerite, so she just took her hand and put it in her crotch so she could feel it. And she started laughing so hard, she peed herself. The cabbie's like, I don't know what the hell you two are laughing at back there, but this has been a fun ride. She's like, yeah, wait till you can see that back seat. Bro. So my grandmom goes, um, she and a cousin Jimmy of ours both have the same birthday. It's like December 9th, years apart, but the same day. So they would always go get like a coffee and breakfast. I don't want to forget something. I have to write it down. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because this is with you. Hold on. Um, oh, is this, this is what I'm thinking? I don't know. The cup man fart story? No. Oh, no. It's not the story where you shit in the guy's mouth, literally? No. Um, no, 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 no. Not that one. No. Um, 
so anyway, they, they have the same birthday. They're gone. They usually get like a breakfast and a coffee or whatever together in the right. morning. So she gets coffee and she's like, Ryan, it hit me. It just, it got me. This is who? Your aunt? It's my grandma. Wait, I think I know this. And she went back to the bathroom. Yeah. She tells my cousin, just wait here. And she said, Ryan, I had diarrhea so bad. She's like, and I wasn't touching that toilet. You know, and they're in Baltimore City and she just pulls her. Pant, or shirt up, pants down. She goes to the bathroom and she goes, I turn around, I wipe, I turn around to go flush. And she goes, there's nothing in the toilet. I'm like, what? She's like, it's sprayed all over the wall, like a lion. You know what I mean? Like all over the wall. She's like, oh my God, she's panicking. Like, oh my God. So she's washing her hands and trying to get the fuck out of there. And right then an employee comes in to clean the restroom. And my grandmother just looks at this lady and she goes, some sick son of a bitch <laughs> did that in there. And then just hauled ass, grabbed my cousin Jimmy. She's like, we got to get the go. hell out of here. And he's like, I'm not done my coffee. He's like, I'll buy you another coffee. We got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Shit all over their wall. Who, okay. Who were we hanging out with? Do you remember we were talking? Man. It's Is like this what, what you just wrote down? Yes. <laughs> yeah. That we were like, we were hanging out in a group of guys. And somebody, remember we were, I forgot. It's like it's like vaguely coming to me. We're hanging out with a group of guys, and there was one guy who wasn't, I guess, like part of our circle. And we were talking about like a hot chick, and the guy went went overboard. Do you remember? Like, oh yeah, she's hot. She's and then the guy was like, man, I'd love to split her in half and fuck her till she shits. And we were like, what? <laughs> no, you don't I don't. Know. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and he kept saying that kind of stuff, and everybody was like, all right, <laughs> you don't remember that? No. Dude, I feel like it was been it was you. I'm trying to think of like the the group because it wasn't comics. It wasn't comics. It was like I felt like it was either grind staff or, um, and there was somebody else like in this in this circle that we were talking, and we we all walked away and we we're like that guy's fucking gonna kill somebody. This wasn't your cousin that got drunk in Vegas and started saying shit where we all had to eventually just get away from the table. <laughs> Like, yeah, you're going to be playing this blackjack on your own, man. <laughs> no. Or my other cousin that was singing. <laughs> yeah. Drunk. Drunk. Every time people are saying crazy shit, they're drunk. But this was not a drunk guy, man. God, I wish. This is going to come to you at like 2 in the yep, morning. Yeah, it is. It's going to wake yeah. me up. I, look, man, I don't know what you've been doing during all this shit, but I fucking, I can't sleep. I walk the streets. Really? Dude, I walk the streets. Yeah, you sleep eight and a half hours. I'm out there at midnight. Oh, so let me tell you what happened last night. This is crazy. So last night I'm outside. I mean, I have developed a weed smoking habit on top of my weed smoking habit. And really? I, I love it. What else am I going to do? You know? Dude, eight hours eight, and 15 <laughs> I'm going to match it tonight. What is the app is that? This is a, well, this is my whoop. Oh, it's your whoop. Whoop, whoop. Um, so I'm out last night. It's probably midnight. And the streets are empty, so I'm just walking. I'm smoking a joint. I think of things, you know, I put them in my notepad. Yeah. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm just very creative at night. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, here comes a police SUV. Here comes another one. Here comes another one. All headlights off, parking lights only. They're pulling up everywhere. Cops come up. They're like, you see anybody running through here? I go, no, just people walking their dogs. All right, they pull away. And then they do it again. Come by. You see, another guy. You see a guy look like this. You hear anybody screaming or yelling. I go, I've been out here for 10 minutes just getting some fresh air. And I haven't heard that at Are all. Are you holding a joint or anything? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're all talking to me. But they got bigger problems right now. Yeah. Some real shit's going on. But there's like eight of them. They're pulling in every direction. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, let me get the fuck in the house. You know, yeah. I'm not going to be that white guy. It's like, what's going on out here? <laughs> and uh, you know what? I'll read about it. I got the citizen app. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Is it over there? It's all loud over there. <laughs> Heard it coming from that way, guys. You know, I'll take the lead. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure he's over here. Let me put on my iPhone flashlight. Um, but they're they're flashlighting and everything. So today I find out that apparently the building behind uh, or diagonal from us, um, some home intruder got in. The dude got him and was holding him down. He was screaming, "Call the police! I got him! Call the police!" And then I guess the dude got away and hauled ass out of there. And they were all looking for him. I was, Ooh, I'm just out there smoking a fucking joint, minding my business, but I didn't hear anybody. Holy shit, man! I, it's been crazy. The place behind me has been um, it burned down. There's just fucking the people. Really? Moved, the people moved. Well, it didn't burn down. It got burned down. The people moved out. This is the building behind you? Mm -hmm. the, the whole building? Me. So the people moved out, and the dude, I guess he sold it, and they're demoing the building to build these new, nice, high-rise condos. 
But in the meantime of that building being vacant, it's been taken over by squatters and homeless, crazy homeless people, like crazy shit. Um, they, this, the, they've set two fires, all the kind of shit's going on. So, um, I don't know, a week and a half ago, they set it on like legit on fire. This now. is the, the demoed. Yeah. The demo. Cause they're all, so it had to be boarded up fence. Oh, the and police then, always say we can't do anything. You know, we but can they just burn it down. They fucking set it on fire. Like this is the second time, but this time for like, like it's a big ass fire. It looked like when I got to my, I had to drive home. I wasn't home. We're all getting these texts, like get home. Because it was huge. Um, there were like a hook and ladder. It must have been eight fire trucks, ambulances. Oh, man. Like, they treated this shit like it was, you know. Was fuck, anybody in there? I was kept waiting here. We got a dead body in there, and I haven't heard yet. No. And, but um, they, bur- they burned it down. It was the fire department said, look, if this thing would have been, if we would have got this call right after midnight, we would have reduced our staff because they'd be spread out everywhere else. And you guys would have been fucked. This would have spread to every building around here and this whole corner would have gone up. But they were, dude, that LA fire department was on top of shit. Do you remember when I lived with Chuck and my neighbor got murdered? (laughs) I I do now. Yeah. (laughs) That That was the, that was the house where I was dog sitting. They used to shoot, uh, transsexual porn upstairs uh, or my neighbor upstairs. There was an upstairs in that house. Yeah. This is the one that he and I moved to the with picket fence around the yard. Yeah. It was a two story. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they would come, he would bring, he would bring, <laughs> uh, actors. <laughs> yeah. To, uh, Thespians. To, yeah. yeah thespians. <laughs> they would park, by my bedroom and the the staircase to his place was by my bedroom. So I would, I would see them walk up the stairs like, hi. And then he would have production lights in his apartment. You know, you'd be like, the fuck is, are they shooting up there? Because, and then you would just hear it. You'd hear that shit. Oh yeah. And moaning and yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were, they were, that would be upstairs. And then if you walk out our front door, you know, like that we normally you'd see the, from our living room, you open the front door, there's a house across the street, and then the one to the right, that guy, they shot him. He got killed, shot him with a shotgun seven times. Come on. Yeah. That is personal. Yeah. On the on the driveway, in the driveway. Were you guys home? Yeah. What? But here's the thing. I didn't, I was in a dead sleep. Because it sleep, happened. You to, sleep good, bro. I, I sleep good. right there. <laughs> There it is. <laughs> there it is. I wish you guys happened to be watching Boogie Nights and it was that scene so you didn't know the shots were real. You know? <laughs> all I, I thought it was the movie, man. All I remember <laughs> was I was asleep and then uh, Chuck standing over me. Tommy. Tommy. And I, I'm like, what? He's like, do you hear that? I'm like, I'm, I'm asleep. <laughs> what are you talking about? He's like, you didn't hear that? I'm like, no, nah, dude. And then he's like, it sounded like really loud bang. And I was like, I didn't hear anything. I hear you talking to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then not even a few minutes later, just, and it was a LAPD detectives already there. Seven. Listen, so seven. They, they said that with that type of gun that he, he was shot, they emptied it and reloaded and shot him. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That would take like a minute to do yeah. seven of those. Yeah. And they shot him on in the driveway on top of his car. Fuck. Yeah. Holy Unsolved. shit. Unsolved. Uh, they never they never uh they never got anyone for it. They're scared of that guy. They said he was uh he was dealing drugs. I mean, I'm watching this guy out back. This was like two weeks ago. There's a homeless guy in there and he's having a standoff with the police. Really? He's screaming, You're gonna have to fucking kill me. He's got a pipe and shit. And this dude's they've threatened people, they're fucking our cars up. Like it's just been a problem all over the neighborhood. Everyone's going to these court meetings, whole thing. This is recent? Yeah, it's been a it's been a like a year and a half ordeal of this shit. Damn. And um so we're like, Oh, I'm like, oh my God, are they gonna fucking kill this guy right now? He's screaming, You're gonna have to fucking kill me, you're gonna have to kill me, and I'm not and then they the cops like we're just going to leave. We're like, wait, what? The whole building's out there. Like, you're going to leave? Like, you, why? Finally, we can do so. He's threatening you. They're like, he's just crazy. It's not worth it. And then I was like, oh, you guys are worried he's got the coronavirus and you don't want to put him in the fucking car with you. That's exactly what it is. They're worried all of them are. Yeah. They're not arresting anybody right yeah. now. No violent crimes. No. That's what I was saying. Even 
it, th those cops weren't going to fuck with me. First of all, it's legal enough. And second of all, there's somebody that's breaking into people's homes. Why don't you go chase that guy? I'm out here trying to get some fresh air. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's some wild shit, it's though. Cr it's been crazy going on, yeah. Yeah, I remember the... Um, so the next thing was... <laughs> They, oh, I have something I want to ask you about that's what? kind of a honeydew job. Well, tell me what. No, so they came and they distributed flyers for their, like, we're, we're seeking someone for this. Hey, homicide. we're looking for the guy that yeah. took his time and shot this motherfucker <laughs> in his driveway on his car. With a shotgun. Seven, seven times. times. So if you have any information, <laughs> yeah, Call right. Nail, I'm going to tell you who that is. That guy doesn't give a yeah, fuck. Well, this just, just, that yeah. guy doesn't give a fuck. This will show you how how my brain works <laughs> and how it's not equipped for the corporate You space. gave him info? No. Um, I had... <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy, dude. <laughs> you, I wouldn't have said... I'm like, I, no, I didn't give... I'll I tell didn't, you... I, I didn't give anybody info. Too, I didn't okay. give any info. I didn't do anything. What happened was they gave us those flyers and I thought it was so ridiculous. So I was working in post-production at the time and my boss was like, oh, I know you do comedy. Um... Will you do, we're having this end of the week, we have to do this presentation. We have to do a meeting, a big meeting in the conference room. You know, it has like 30 people at it. Is there anything you could do to like, you know, that would be funny? I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, you know, like, I don't know, maybe you could like distribute a packet or something and just, you know, maybe put some comedy into it. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I just got some flyers. <laughs> So I made copies of that homicide flyer, and then I, <laughs> I, I took some other things that I thought were funny, and uh, I had them <laughs> like professionally put together, and then I distributed it in this meeting. And he was like, "All right, Tom, like take it away." And I was like, "All right." And he did, had no idea. He had no idea what was going to happen. And then <laughs> there's like I don't know. <coughs> probably like a meme and then something I wrote and then, and then this thing. And I was like, and this is, uh, also like my neighbor got killed a couple weeks ago and we're trying to solve it. And he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I, I started to like try to, to riff on it. And pe some people were laughing and some people were like, what's going on? And, <laughs> and I was like, and then somebody was like, Oh, he, like he, he typed this up. Like, uh, he's a comedian. He, he wrote this up in, in that conference meeting. And I was like, oh, no. Like, this is You're real. right about me being a comedian. <laughs> yeah. But my neighbor was brutally murdered on the hood of his car. And okay. I, thought, <laughs> I thought we could use it Maybe to we bring some light that. to this meeting. And they were like, wait, what, what's the funny part? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then afterwards and then there's a gif of me right here with a wtf you know what i was <laughs> guys please put your recycling to recycle cans and yeah. if anybody has any information on the brutal murder of my neighbor <laughs> please call this number right here and i thought it was like a, oh, a funny moment shit. you know <laughs> i remember too the other thing was that I never considered that people in the room may have experienced some horrific violence in their life. Yeah, right. So <laughs> so afterwards one of the girls was like, Is it, is this real? And I was like I was like, Yeah. Some fucking somebody killed my neighbor, isn't that crazy? And she was like, Yeah, I I know a lot of people that have been killed and I was like, All right. So Do she, you have flyers? <laughs> <laughs> we could add them to Can next bring week's a fact. Flyer? <laughs> Let's solve some cases, y'all. <laughs> All right, let's have a good week, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to use too many cups out there, guys. Yeah. Um, I saw this again, too. So I got to move. This is the first time I've ever even said this to anybody, but um, I witnessed something uh, one night, these two guys. Uh, now, this is what I have put together in my head because, again, I don't tell anybody shit and I don't talk to anybody. And yeah. there is a security guard that was right there and I could have answered all his questions and I was like, I'm not telling anybody shit. But there's a guy that comes that would come home in a white Range Rover blaring his music all the time. And he would always have like a gang of dudes roll with him. They would always be loud, but they're always coming in 2.30 or 3 in the morning. His alarm would always go off. Same thing every fucking night. 
but you could say he was arrogant, you know, just fucking flashing money and everything. And I just knew he pissed somebody off because these two dudes come up the alley one night. I mean, bandana. I could tell one's one's a black guy, but the other person, I couldn't tell age, race, sex, nothing. They were covered. The only thing I could see on the other guy was this. They walk. They are not in a fucking hurry. They pull out pistols and they aim at his. Now, meanwhile, this is where where are this you? Is right my right behind my building. Now they've walked past all of everyone else's cars. If they wanted, if they were there for any other reason, they would have shot up every fucking car. They walked right to that gate. They put their guns through, pop, 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 and blew his fucking front up. Okay, and then walked leisurely away from it. Okay. Now I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> And the security guard comes right around the corner. And I'm like, they might have known the fucking security guard and said, we're going to go do this. Maybe he's in it. But he starts writing up some shit or whatever. I go to bed. I wake up in the morning. The car is gone. Okay. Now, there's another dude that parks next to him. And these two, they would rival back and forth. Okay. And I remember this exact. It was this kickoff of football, not of, of last year. Okay. Mm -hmm. Opening day. And I hear this horrible fucking like metal grinding on metal and <clears throat> gears and shit. And then just this loud boom. And I look outside and the dude that parks next to the dude in the Range Rover who has beef with the guy in the Range Rover drives this big ass Ford pickup with a fat like lift axles, the whole thing. Dude, the axle is off his truck. It's off like it's and he's blocking everyone's in and out so we're stuck good thing i got three and a half hours of football he had to call a tow truck regular tow truck was too small to take it he had to call a big ass like rollback to come get it and i was like man these guys got a fucking feud going on but yeah they walked right up bah, 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 bah. And just then just with guns up. yes pistols handguns yeah in the, in a back alley in a just back shot alley, up a car right shot up a car yeah. and then they're like you want to walk away yeah. yes like let's go over here and get fucking tacos <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Wait, what were you going to ask? You said I, I was, was going to ask yeah. you about your job that's a honeydew job. You may not want to talk about it, so you might want to edit this. But I, what I remember when I first met you and Chuck, yeah, uh, you guys had a job yeah. that I couldn't and still can't. And, and from every now and then, I, I'll pass that area or it'll come in my head. I'm like, God, but it was at a place called Splash. Yeah. Have you talked about that ever? I feel like I've maybe mentioned it. I've, it's funny. I've been writing about that, too. I'm writing the whole thing. You asked me if there's any. That is something. That job. This is the funny Wait, thing. Can I get a bottle of water, please, real quick? Yeah. I don't think I'm sorry. I may have. Did I crack this one I yet? don't know. Did you? No. Oh, I'll take Here, that. I'll take this it. one. He didn't crack I didn't, that I just cracked Thank it. Thank you. I don't have the COVID player. All right. So. So here's this is the truth, okay? When I explain I first, to people what splash, yeah, yeah. Is. Well, first I want to say like okay. how this I ended up with this. <laughs> so I get to LA, and you know, you get kind of settle in, and I'm like, I need to get a job. Um, I had come working from like more like career oriented stuff, even though I was so young, but I'd already had a real estate license and worked in real estate, so I felt like that could have been obviously like a career track. And then I worked in, uh, I worked for America's Most Wanted and I worked in uh, the research department and I, I even helped produce an episode. So I, I had that, which felt like real work. Mm -hmm. And now I'm coming here and I'm like, oh, I need to get a job. You know what I mean? Like a, an hourly job. So, and I don't really have, I, I didn't really have, you know, restaurant experience, anything like that. I'm like, what, what, what can I do for like a job? And I see, I forget whether it was uh, in some type of trades or online, but hiring at a spa. And I'm like, oh, I've been to spas. Spas are nice. I could, I could work at a spa, you know, fold some towels and smell eucalyptus all day. So yeah. Be all right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I thought it'd be all right, you know. And uh, I go with Chuck to splash the relaxation spa. Which so, was also very popular back in the day on Blind Date. That's where they would end up on Blind. I did not know that when we went there. Okay. I found that out. So if you ever watch Blind Date, the old one, not that they read, they just brought it back, but the old one, you know, they throw people together, go on a date, and they would end up always somewhere in a, in a hot tub. And the hot tub was um, at Splash because what Splash really was 
was an hourly rental hot tub rooms. It was where you could bring prostitutes, basically. But they don't. Instead of a fuck motel, it's a fuck tub. Yeah. Yeah. I just farted so loud. (laughs) Um, I thought that was next door. (laughs) I thought that was noise next door. (laughs) I hope the mics pick that up. But. So splash. um, So I get there and I'm literally picturing like there will be massage therapist yeah, Burke Williams yeah yeah mud wraps right yeah you know yeah, there'll be some mud wrap oh right. man so there's a front desk and the, the guy who who owns it is going to train us and he starts so I'm like I'm sitting here like putting together because he doesn't just come out and say this is what this is I'm like this is a spa I, you know I've been to a spa before so I'm like where are the therapists where where you know so he starts taking us room by room and it's just and they have <laughs> I love that you're looking for therapy. I am like, like that's what's gonna spa. Yeah, that's what's this is a spa. Fish. So I'm like I walk into this room, he's like, This is the Barcelona room. I'm like, Barcelona? What? and it's just a theme. They have like a themed room. And then they have Japanese garden, and then they have like Istanbul and like just these names with like maybe there's a painting that sort of reflects that that name. But it's just a hot tub and then like a, a cheap mattress uh you know raised on a, on some type of bedding with uh sheets and and some sh- and then a knob for music mm-hmm. and then buttons for the for the hot tub and i'm like what the fuck is this man so he's like people come in here they rent the room by the hour and i'm like rent the room by the hour then he brings up blind date comes here all the time and i'm like okay so where el- where's the other stuff and he's like this is it I'm like that's what this place is i'm like yeah well, then he starts training us like how to before and after people come, you got to do put this mixture in the hot tub and, and then, you know, measure the chlorine, uh, make up, make sure you wipe down everything. Then like there's going to be condoms everywhere. I'm like, what? And uh, he's like, yeah, people come here on dates. And I'm like, dates. Then he says, you know, some people will come here, but we never advertise that we you that you know prostitution is something you can do here but they come here and you should never like encourage it or advertise it but that's what happens and i'm like oh okay takes us through the whole thing through the whole day of like every room and i'm like um all right man after like one day chuck's like i can't work here and i'm like i'll give it a shot (laughs) so i'm behind the counter my favorite thing was this so every, everybody's obviously counting their dollars for, for anything, right? So when you go there, if you say, like, I want, I'm Ryan Sickler, and I want the Barcelona room. I'm like, okay. And my lady's coming to meet me here in a minute. I'm like, great. You have to wait in the lobby until she gets here. You can't go and wait in that room. I can't be all just macking in the Barcelona room. Well, here's room the thing. The, the whole reason for that is, has to do with billing. Because if you go to the room... Before she gets there, it could create the idea that you at the end go, well, I was only here from this time. Like she didn't get here, so I wasn't really using the room. I see. So to avoid all that, you always wait for both parties to arrive and they have to go into the room together. Man, I worked, I ended up working there two weeks. Okay. I had to explain, I had to defend that policy every day, every day, all day. People were like, just let me go wait in the room because what was happening was they were embarrassed to be meeting someone they don't know to have sex with them, right? So, and I, I grew to enjoy the feeling of telling them. Watching no, them yeah, see yeah, each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, So I was like, oh no, you have to wait here. And then they would squirm. You could tell they were like, oh fuck, you know, they didn't want to be waiting in front of people. And of course, I mean, you know, you, you just go like, oh yeah, just wait here, man. One time there was a guy, he was like, oh yeah, I just want the room. And I was like, okay, cool. And he's like, I'm just gonna go there. I go, no, 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 you have to wait here. And he was like, oh no, I, I I can't wait here. I'm like, that's the policy. You can't go into the room until, until the, uh, the party arrives completely. And he was like, All right, fuck. And he was like looking at his watch and he was, I mean, he was pacing. He was really nervous. And I'm like, all right. And then whatever, 10 minutes later, these, uh, these two guys walk in. One of them kind of rough looking and they're like, Jim, and he's like, Mario. And he's like, Kevin. And they all just kind of meet there. They go into the room together mm. And like, man, like six you can minutes hear later, it, you're telling me too. Si- oh yeah, but like six minutes later, he, like dude splits, and then the other guys leave. 
and you go in there and there's yeah there's just three condoms like that's know. what i remember you told me you set the mop up jizz off the yeah yeah, yeah oh fuck dude. one of my last days uh here's the thing. <laughs> one of my yeah, last yeah. days <laughs> <laughs> one of my last days because what would happen was the uh I would have thought when I started that we'll run into that prostitution thing. It's the opposite. It's it's a uh, it's it's like all prostitutes. But then every once in a while, people are like, "Oh, this does seem like a fun date." So you you oh. you'd have couples coming in like, ah. "We're trying to spice it up, have some fun." I'm like, "There's nothing but whores here," you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> This couple comes in where the woman is clearly like this, like she's driving this experience, and the guy is like, "I don't want to be here. This shit's nasty." And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. "So they go down. I take him to a room, and then the phone rings at the front desk. He's like, "Man, this shit is nasty. There's hairs in the sink." Ugh. And I'm like, "I'm like, really?" And what of course, kind? I'm like, "Of course." My actual thought is like, "Yeah, I'm not. I'm not trying." to be a great cleaner. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I'm like, what? And then I I go down there and I'm like, I cannot believe. Let me move you yeah. guys to the Istanbul room. Yeah. I like right. wipe it down and then I try to move. And eventually he 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 calls it off. He's like, no, no, no. I'm not I'm not doing this place is nasty as hell. I was like, good call, man. Um so I, and then I remember it was like uh, that was towards the end and then like a couple days later I uh, I didn't have another job, but I remember I called the owner and I go, I got another job, man. I'm sorry. I got I got I can't come in anymore. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was like, I'm sorry that I won't be. I'm sorry know. I can't clean come up. For I you can't. Anymore. I mean, the jizz <laughs> yeah. mopping is a blast. But oh god, damn. um, I told him I couldn't, and I and I remember that I was lying. That I didn't have another job, but I was like, it's just too, it's too gross, and it's too like. The environment for a week or two, oh, it feels like sick. your I people watch it. Once you know, while. it feels yeah. like you're yeah. you're conducting some type of I don't know social experiment where you're like this is why. But once the the newness of it wore off, I was like, this is just foul, man. It was gross. It was gross. Is that the grossest job you've ever had? I mean, I mean, what gets grosser than mopping up strangers' jizz? Yeah, I think you know when you put it like that, that's. <laughs> Probably at the top of the right list. Right at the top <laughs> now, yeah. I've done some gross shit. I mean, I feel like maybe it's just really the... Uh, I've had a lot of like those weird short runs, you know, like construction stuff. I worked uh, security at a uh, at an auction before. At an auction? What yeah. kind of auction? Like antiques and oh, stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're the security guard I'll at work, an antique I'll, auction? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what is that like? Um, I just like, I mean, it's I was got to be there. Who yeah. The I, I feel like I was a high school or college. I think it was maybe, maybe it was college. I was a big dude. And they just, there you go. Just like, look like you're fucking just look menacing. <laughs> yeah. So you just put on your fucking scowl. And, uh, I mean, it's all like old people. So they're like, Oh my God, you know? Um, and then, I mean, the construction stuff was the most brutal, you know? Uh, I, <laughs> I remember that I, I ever tell you I worked with a guy there who told me that a bathtub fell on his neck out of a, <laughs> and I, I laughed in his face like that. <laughs> a bathtub fell on his fucking neck. Yes. How, yes. How the hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, this guy. This guy all those was things I wish I could have seen. This like, guy oh, was yeah. super fucked up. And when he told me that, I laughed for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous and thing to hear. He just stayed like something that big deadpan. fell on my <laughs> neck <laughs> from a third floor window. <laughs> How's he alive? How's he alive? <laughs> Dude, he, he, he had he had a metal rods in his <laughs> neck. <laughs> He had metal. Should have hung shower neck. curtains off those motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> you know why it came up? So this <laughs> guy, we're doing construction. Oh my god! My friend's dad bought these shitty oh. apartments, and he wanted to uh, remodel them, right? In like the in Florida. It's the summer after my freshman year in college, so I come home and he's like, "My dad bought these these shitty apartments." We're going to, um, he's going to like re, you know, retile them, 
paint, uh, put new AC units in them, and then rent them. So he's like, do you want, you know, do you want some, some work? And I was like, yeah, it'd be great, man. So, dude, we're going, <laughs> we're laying tile in apartments in summertime in Florida. Who, they don't have the AC units oh, yet. Oh, man, yeah. So you're on the floor, you know, it's 97, it's, there's 110% humidity. I mean, just, I mean, like a faucet, yeah. just dripping. Every night, I remember I would sleep like a baby then, dude, because you would just, we'd go there, we'd get there at 7 a.m. and work till 5 or something and just be completely exhausted. Well, this guy is like the the foreman, and he's clearly like a transient type, you know? He's It's not the on the- kind that, that would yeah. have a tough yeah. fall on his yeah. neck. It's not, <laughs> it's not on the books kind right, of work. Yeah, right. So- this guy has experience. So he's telling us how to like lay grout and, and do all this stuff. But he's, we're, ba you know, he's in charge and we're just, you know, he's like, bring those two by fours here. And we're like the muscle, right? Me and my, my friend and I. So one day we're out there and he takes his shirt off and I'm like, what the fuck? So he has in under his skin, this shit sticking like this. Bulging like, out. Bulging out from like in, in his abdominal area. I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's like, oh, it's a morphine drip. I was like, what? It's built into his body. It's sewn into his body. <laughs> it's and I'm built like, in morphine. Yes. Holy so they, shit. this is in his body. And it, he's like, it's a constant drip. The wiring goes here to my neck and it drips on my neck. And I go, what? I go, I've how never. Old, how old do you think he is? So at the time I was 18 or 19 and he was probably, 50s, I want to say 40s. Uh, maybe 40s. And, you know, he didn't yeah. look great. Um, I mean, yeah. So he's considering. got, he's, he had like that. Thin guy build, but with the pot belly, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, totally. And um, and it, you see this thing protruding. And I'm like, wait, what are you? I go, I've never, to this day, by the way, I've only heard one other person bring that up, like that 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 they know what that is. The morphine drip in the body. Yes, and I like one other person in 25 years has brought that up to me, and I've never seen another one. So this is like, so the guy takes his shirt. I see it. And I'm like, what, what are you is talking it, what about? What does it look like? Is you it, just see like that there's a, clearly something like a fist foreign. pushing through the well, it, flesh. But or? it looks like um, it looks like obvious machinery, like right. a foreign object under. Like it'd be like if oh, I yeah. had this phone I was say, like an iPod under my skin, back in the day. and you're like, what the fuck is that doing under your skin? So he tells me, he tells me the uh, he's like, oh yeah, it's a it's a morphine drip. And it's sewn in. I go, why is it sewn into your skin? And he goes, well, because I had a, a, yeah, intraspinal drug delivery, I guess, would be one of the ways of doing it. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I had an accident, like a horrific accident. And I was like, what happened? And, dude, I'm just, like, looking at him like this. Like, what happened? And he goes, well, I was working on a site, and they uh, they had built the whole building, and they hadn't, mistakenly hadn't put the tubs in into this, uh, into the apartments. So they had to use a special crane to load bathtubs externally through the windows. And one fell out of it mm -hmm. and landed on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and he, he just looked at me like, what? Cause I started laughing so hard. And, <laughs> and I go, I go, what happened? And he's like, my neck went to dust. Like like the bones were turned into powder. How and is I was he like, not dead? I don't know. I it was had like, to hit in such a specific yeah, way yeah. where nothing else hit his head or anything. He just he and I go, a tub, holy bro. shit, man. And I just I kept looking at him and cause he stayed deadpan. I kept every time I looked at him, I started laughing. And um he goes, yeah, so I was in the hospital for all this time. They reconstructed my neck with all these rods, and they put this fucking thing in because I'm in so much pain. He's microdosing morphine every day, all day long. <laughs> and then, and then he's, so he saw me lose my shit laughing. Yeah. So uh, he, he started to go, uh, <laughs> he goes, you know, I retire, like the next day he goes, you want to hear about the time I broke my legs? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I totally do. <laughs> we'll fell on those. Hey, he's, dude, he started to tell, he goes, <clears throat> like a week would come by and he would, he was like, oh, he goes, I know you, 
love these stories, so I thought I'd tell you about when I broke my collarbone. Yeah. And he would just tell me these stories about horrific accidents, <laughs> and I would just laugh my ass off. He had like a, he had a, a, a tree trimming accident. He had a, a ladder uh, co- like fall on him and break his arm. <laughs> This guy shouldn't be working at anything like that. <laughs> but the tub, tub on the neck. On my neck, bro. I mean, just that Pow. line. <laughs> Dude. Uh, yeah. Shit. It was one of the hardest I've ever laughed. I'll bet, dude. Right in his <sighs> face, too. In God, his, I mean, there's no way I could have hidden it. It hit me in such a way that I could I mean, not. for anybody, why would you ever be expecting to hear that? Oh, yeah. tub fell on my neck. You're like, what? Third floor. <laughs> third floor. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Dude, how, what would that must have felt? I mean, I bet he didn't even feel it. It just would have been like. It had to knock him out, and he had to wake up and be like, I'm still alive. Yeah, yeah. but your neck's dust. Well, here's the thing. What? A tub fell on your neck. A tub fell on your neck, bro. <laughs> From the third story. <laughs> He probably didn't remember any of that. No. Just waking up like, oh, no. oh man. <sighs> All right. All right. We got to get you out of here. Yeah. Um, thank you again for of being course. on here. And great. I mean, we didn't even say you're fucking special, dude. It's so fucking good. Oh, thanks, I love man. It. And I loved being out there and even seeing stuff I didn't get to see. So yeah. it's so good, dude. Thanks, Make sure man. everybody watches it. If you check out Ball Hog. Yeah, check out Ball Hog. Streaming now on Netflix. Um, and again, go to YouTube. The Honeydew video episodes are moving to my YouTube page. Again, I'll still be under the feature channel on YMH, but the full episode will be on my YouTube. So go subscribe there now. Uh, go to my website, ryansickler.com. You can s- subscribe there. Uh, sign up to my email list. Send me your stories for Honeydew with y'all. Within a few weeks, we'll be getting that up and going. And uh, you'll be getting some learner's permit stuff here in a few weeks as well. And just going to keep content coming your way and have fun with you guys. Night pants also. Stay comfortable out there. Get your night pants. Get them send night me, pants. Send me your pictures. I'll put them up there with you. Uh, thank you again. I love you. Stay healthy. I love you too, man. And I want you to be the first guest at the new studio. I'd love to be. Um, so we're going to be making that switch, by the way, uh, by June 1st. So you get over there now. Get over there. Sign up. And uh, we'll talk to you all next week.